right now, Honda doesn't sell a single fully electric vehicle in the US. But recently, Honda said they're officially breaking into the battery electric market. Not one, not two, but 30 electric vehicles globally by 2030. And 20 will be for the US market. This means more competition for Tesla, Rivian, Lucid, and many other car makers that are ready in the BEV space. Today, I'll explain why Honda changed its mind. We'll also look at how cars will move to subscription services. Soon, buying a car will no longer be just about buying a physical hardware car, but it'll be more about a platform with services that will enable you to connect to modern daily conveniences, all for a monthly subscription fee that never ends. We'll also touch on Honda's new initiatives to make electric motorcycles and e-scooters. If I asked you to name the top EV company today, Honda wouldn't even be on your list. That's because at the moment, Honda only sells one electric vehicle, the Honda E, which is a subcompact car that's only sold in Japan and Europe. Actually, a lot of people criticize Honda for not embracing EV technology earlier, but they're not entirely correct. In the past, Honda, like Toyota, preferred to invest in hydrogen fuel cell vehicles as a clean zero emission option. So how successful or mainstream is hydrogen? Well, today, there are some 8,000 hydrogen powered cars in the U.S. are between 30,000 to 35,000 on the road globally. Compare that to 10 million plus fully electric EVs already on the road worldwide. So you can see where the money is. Analysis, expect an additional 2 million more EVs to be added this year alone. But the numbers aren't the only things working against hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. Hydrogen fuel cell vehicles first started in 1966 with GM's Electrovan. Yet despite more than half a century development, hydrogen fuel cell cars are still expensive to produce. You can only find them in a few country or regions that have built hydrogen fueling stations. Part of the reason for low hydrogen sales in America is because of the lack of infrastructure network. Unless you live in California, you pretty much can't drive a hydrogen car. That's because California is currently the only state in the U.S. with a hydrogen fueling network. Once you leave the state, you're stuck. But what about battery electric vehicles? In the 12 years that we've had the modern electric vehicle, 1.3 million battery electric and plug-in hybrid vehicles have been sold here in the U.S. You can see it's quite a stark difference. Honda's always tried their best to stay true to their climate forward slogan, blue skies for our children. But right now, they realize the best option for blue skies is to embrace fully electric cars. And now that the combustion engine ban will be happening in the States and in many other countries, you can see why fully electric vehicles have become critical for Honda. Did you know that Honda pledged $40 billion towards electrification and software technologies over the next 10 years? But remember, technically, electrification doesn't mean they'll make all their cars bad battery electric. Rather, it means all vehicles will have an electric motor of some sort somewhere in the drivetrain. Most likely Honda will be investing a large chunk of their $40 billion in conventional hybrid vehicles and plug-in hybrid models as well. The recent $40 billion pledge and plan to roll out 30 unique electric vehicles globally equates to about 2 million cars. Of these 30 future EVs, two will be electric sports vehicles. One is expected to succeed the Acura NSX that recently departed the market. The bulk of these new EVs will mainly be cross crossovers, which makes a lot of sense, given how popular crossovers are in America. Did you know that Honda has already sunk $343 million bucks into developing their own line of solid-state batteries? And they plan to bring these batteries to their new BEVs in the second half of the decade. For now, though, they will be relying on lithium-ion batteries to power their upcoming EVs. Now, Honda didn't specify the actual underlying technologies for all these EVs, but Honda did note they'll expand the use of the Honda e-architecture that they use in their current Hondas. Honda also shipped in their business model. They plan to focus on hardware and software both. Right now, their core business is selling non-recurring hardware, which is pretty much car units, but they'll shift into offering after-sales services from software-based features. Take, for example, safety and navigation features. Today, you get most of these features as a part of the car. There's no extra cost. But with Honda's new plan, you'll pay for these features probably monthly or yearly. But Honda isn't the only automaker with this idea. Pretty much every other automaker you can think of is exploring this concept. You can think of it like a monthly car subscription service for add-on features. These fees will be to support things like content, services, and upgrades. Take GM, for example. They believe it'll generate $25 billion in revenue annually by 2030, purely on software and subscription services alone. That's not even including revenue from actual sales of cars themselves. Just look at your smartphone. In the past, we just bought a mobile phone you'd only pay for cellular service. But today, we have a million apps on our phones, each operating different services. Many of these apps offer optional services for a monthly subscription. Fee. So now all you need is a smartphone to manage your home security system, operate your robot
robot vacuum and track your weight and diet progress and so forth. This is how the smartphone became more than just telephone hardware. And that's exactly how car makers are viewing cars. It's no longer about selling one car, which is just hardware. Cars are now computers of their own. And this is just the beginning of many services we'll be able to do right from our car's touchscreen. Delantis believes software and subscription services will allow car companies to enjoy the type of operating margins closer to that of high-tech corporations. For example, Stellantis is exploring the possibility of offering services through tech platforms they're launching in 2024. Right now, they've dubbed it STLA Brain, STLA Smart Cockpit, and STLA Auto Drive. That's why Honda's taking this course long-term. To reach that goal, first, Honda will launch smaller-scale EVs in Japan, like the Key Class. These are basically mini cars. While they aren't very popular in the U.S., mini cars are massively popular in Japan. The first new EV released in Japan will be a mini EV for commercial use, most likely a key van. Price? Just around 1 million Japanese yen, which is around 8,000 US dollars. After the key minivan, a variety of other models for personal use should follow, likely including mini SUVs. In China, Honda will introduce 10 new EV models by 2027. That's just five years from now. It's very interesting because not many people know this, but China is by far the world's leading EV market today. So it's a ripe market and huge opportunity for Honda. These 10 new models will be built at dedicated Honda plants in Guangzhou and Wuhan. Another interesting thing is that Honda's press release didn't even mention the European market. Given the population of China, I guess they're going for the big fish. So here's the big thing. Right now, Honda and GM plan to work together to develop a series of affordable EVs based on a new global platform. The purpose of this joint platform is to beat Tesla. Basically, in this joint venture, they'll use GM's next generation Altium battery technology, and they want to offer flexible battery architecture, outstanding power, range, and performance. From luxury and performance cars to daily commutes, SUVs, and pickups, the goal of the Altium platform is to power EVs of every type and at every single price point. Together, Honda and GM are expected to produce millions of lower-priced EVs starting 2027. These new cars will include compact crossover EVs, and they'll be sending some of these across the continents. In a recent statement, they said that they will share their best technology design and manufacturing strategies to deliver affordable and desirable EVs on a global scale. And that would especially include the key markets in North and South America and China. In a way, this is smart. Look, right now, EVs are expensive and most consumers know this. That's why EVs made in the joint Honda-GM partnership are expected to be priced below 30 grand. Aside from external factors that drive up prices, the goal is to return to the days when cars were affordable and mainstream. So far, no financial terms of the new partnership has been disclosed. But the car makers have said they will be discussing future EV battery technology collaboration and opportunities down the line. One of the goals of collaboration is to drive down the cost of electrification, improve performance, and drive sustainability. Now, whether these new EVs will be based on Honda's architecture or on GM's platform has yet to be decided. But the two companies have agreed to share the bill for manufacturing costs, and the cars will potentially be produced at either GM or Honda plants. GM made a bold statement. They want to sell more EVs in the U.S. than anyone else by the middle of the decade. But to do that, they'll need a large portfolio of vehicles. And so partnering with Honda will help them reach their goals as fast as possible. Actually, did you know that Honda and GM have been friends for years? Honda previously invested $750 million bucks in GM's Cruise Autonomous Vehicle Unit. And now Honda and GM are co-developing the Cruise Origin Autonomous EV. The companies also have a joint venture to develop and produce hydrogen fuel cell systems. Plan to do this at a plant in Brownstone, Michigan. But that's not all. GM will be producing two EVs for Honda for the 2024 model year. Honda announced that one of these electric SUVs called the Prologue will be their first dedicated battery electric vehicle coming to the U.S. GM isn't the only large company that Honda's partnering with. Honda's also teaming up with tech giant Sony. They'll be creating a completely new brand together. In a joint statement, they said that their goal is to create this new EV company within the year. And this company will sell its first EV model by 2025. This new company is yet to be named. Some speculate it should be called Sonda or Honey or some other mashup. But we'll have to wait and see. Besides finding a marketable name, they also have to figure out the development, design, planning, and sales aspect of their brand. Honda will take on the responsibility for manufacturing the new EVs at Honda facilities. And Sony will most likely be responsible for building the platform for mobility services. At the helm, the chairman of CEO will be Yasuhode Mizuno, a longtime Honda executive. This is exciting because the pieces of the puzzle are starting to come together. Two years ago, Sony first debuted a concept car at CES, the Consumer Electronics Show. This concept car conveyed the Vision S concept, which is an EV with a variety of sensors and other innovative technologies. At that time, Sony said this concept car was built to test autonomous vehicle technology. Then this year, Sony returned to 
Williams ES Vision SO2 SUV concept. With this SUV, they announced that they would form a business this year to put the car into production. The Vision SO2 was presented as an all-wheel drive setup that output 536 horsepower. Pretty much that's all we know. The mid-size SUV will compete with the Chevrolet Equinox EV Polestar 3 and the Ford Mustang Mach-E. The new Honda Sony EV has expected to hit the market in 2025. With Honda's pledge to eventually be 100% electric, would it surprise you to hear what it means for their motorcycles? Look, Honda is a brand known for its motorcycles. It's the world's leader. Last year, they announced four electric motorcycles to debut in a few years. Last quarter, they released the CRF E2, their first production electric dirt bike and lithium-ion battery. They're not actually making the bike, though. Actually, they licensed to another company called Greener Power Sports. They have a kid's version and an adult's version. And then there's Streamo. This is Honda's newest micro-mobility venture to develop an electric scooter or e-scooter for urbanites. Most city dwellers are already familiar with the growing hype, and we can see more electric scooters passing by cover short distances across the city. Well, now Honda's in the game, so you can see how Honda as a whole is moving forward with electrification across all its businesses. But now you tell me, if you could name the new Honda Sony company, what would you name it? Do you think Honda Sony Venture can even beat Tesla? Please share your opinion by commenting below. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for your support.